Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Animac here from the YouTube and Twitch channel Anime Uproar, and welcome to episode six of the One Piece Virgin podcast. In this episode, we're discussing three shorter arcs. One is Log Town, aka Rogue Town. The other one is Reverse Cowgirl. Oh, oh my favorite. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to my cowboy wife, who, yes, Oda cucked me, but I would still most certainly. Go for it. I don't care. And also Whiskey Peak. So let's get into this. Briggs is with me and Noble from Lost Paws. What's well, cracking? Nice to Noble, is this your first One Piece virgin? Y- yes, this is my first vir- You're taking my virginity on your virgin podcast. Oh, yeah. That's how it goes, man. <laughs> Popping that cherry on the One Piece virgin. Oh, boy. I can't <laughs> wait. Please be gentle to me. Senpai. No promises. No promises. <laughs> Briggs, okay. how you doing, my man? What up, Chad, lads? Always good to be here. Tuesdays are one of the one of my favorite days of the week. I start off with a One Piece read through, do the One Piece podcast, and then usually we do Apex Boys. But unfortunately, Nuxy Boy couldn't make it today. But he'll be back for Thursday's uh, Eranta Cafe. So today we're covering chapters ninety six through one fourteen, and next week for episode seven of the of the One Piece Virgin, we're covering the arc Little Garden, which is chapters one fifteen through one twenty nine, and we'll remind you guys again at the end of the episode. Let's jump in. Yeah, here. and man. This was crazy. Like, so the first two arcs that we covered here were like cool. Like, I was keeping track and all that stuff. But then Whiskey Peak, just like a bunch of crazy shit happened, like out of nowhere. So I thought it was intense and pretty cool. We'll discuss it all. But first thing that we need to discuss is the bounties, right? Because at the beginning, in like chapter ninety six or wherever, we get Luffy's first bounty, and it's thirty million. And we're told that the average bounty amount for a pirate in the East Blue is 3 million, and then you had like Buggy at 15, uh, Krieg at 17, Arlong at 20, and now Luffy, the kid, at 30 million already. And you, and this is his first bounty too, and it's because he did so many things within a short amount of time. He took out Don Krieg, which I believe had a bounty of 17 million. Yes. yes. I can't remember what Buggy's bounty was, if it was higher or lower, but I do remember that Arlong's bounty was 20 million. So based off of all that, they gave him a bounty, a starting bounty of thirty million, and he's got that beautiful smile in it, which is awesome. <laughs> no, yeah. So like the world government, whatever that is, the people that control the marines, just took out that bounty, and then what happens, bro? This was probably my favorite part. Mihawk, my boy, Hawkeye Mihawk, goes visits Shanks, and he's like, "Check out this poster," and Shanks is like, "Luffy, the Mad Lad, did it." Luffy yeah. the Mad Lad. Oh, that was that was an epic moment. And like epic Shanks was all hung moment. over and stuff, and he was like in the anime. They take it a little bit slower, and he's like, "Oh, I can't drink anymore today." And then once Mihawk shows up, he's what's it called? Um, he basically gets all hyped up again. He's like, "All right, we got to drink to celebrate Luffy becoming a pirate and starting his journey." Yeah, bro. Like that's that's that was so sick because you know you know I'm a huge Mihawk stan, and then we have Shanks, and he's over there still doing the pirate thing, and he's like, yo, Luffy, I see you, man. I love how Shanks is just, like, chilling on an island, getting drunk, not really do anything, doing anything. Yeah, yeah. you know, he, he's supposed to be this huge menace. There's <laughs> something over here, this overlord. And what does this mother trucker do in one piece? He just drinks and has a party all day long. Yeah, That's- yeah. I didn't even know that they were talking about him at first when Mihawk came. He's, like, he's talking to him, but he's uh, Shanks is, like, in shadow, like, in the shadow, and he's like... Like, what, you think I'm here to fight you? You're like a one-armed has-been. And then it shows the Shanks. I'm like, oh! Matt, oh, it's Shanks, bro. Shanks is one of the most hyped-up characters in the entire series. And for and we reason. know why. We know why he lost his arm, of course. Yes, so it yeah. all ties in together. Oh, uh, that was that was great. Adam, Ash, also, before what? we continue, yeah, I just want to say there's a little scene that you may have missed within the manga. Because, like, Oda always draws these little things behind, like, the main part of the story. And, Panda Man. Uh, pardon? <laughs> Panda Man, yeah. yeah. But in this one, you, you see Usopp say something like, yeah, we're famous pirates now. We have bounties. And what he was referring to is behind Luffy's like big smile, you see the back of Usopp's head. And basically, yes. <laughs> he's making fun of Sanji and Zoro and the fact that they don't have bounties. And he's like, I'm a wanted man now. 
<laughs> I did see that behind Luffy, like, grinning. Like, you could see just, like, on the side, a little bit of stuff. Yeah, I saw mm-hmm. So a lot of people make fun of, like, the anime's pacing, how it's really slow. But I feel like sometimes it helps you pick up every little detail because they take the time to show every little thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can also watch the OVAs, too, which is what I did, and it definitely catches you up really quick. Ooh, hype. Yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to, this is a kind of nerdy of me, but I noticed that Logtown is based on Florence, Italy, and there are multiple buildings in that town that are based on real buildings in Florence, including the H- Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore. So I thought that was cool. Wow, I had no idea. <laughs> yeah yeah geography nerd all right so well, i mean geography is everything okay so now can we talk about cowboy waifu okay yes because okay, when i yeah. first said yo this chick is hot you guys were like oh <laughs> whatever man listen okay yes it turns out that she's actually alvita from before the one that was like abusing our boy kobe but mm-hmm. she got a uh devil fruit it's not called the slim slim fruit it's called the slip slip fruit but bro i'm down for it the way she looks now yeah man dude. she can lube you up man <laughs> yeah look sanji was like yo she's so hot everyone was like yeah she's so hot she's hot man you know and yeah. luffy just shuts Say her down you real quick yeah good old yeah, luffy. And, and, oh, and that was funny she's like luffy you were such a dick to me i want you to be my man <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's how these uh that's how these uh wab and be yeah, yeah, man. that was hilarious like, <laughs> she's like you like smacked me and you were a dick to me no i want i want you to be my man you're so manly and he's like what bitch I, I, i'm not trying to do that shit you're crazy yeah good old luffy i i still like the fact that oda does not like romance and he does not pursue it it's it's kind of refreshing it is it yeah. really is yeah, I mean, I we mean, do get, we do get Sanji adventure. being an absolute simp, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, yes, Sanji the simp. But yeah, nothing yeah. actually ends up happening, of it, happening with it, and Luffy's obviously, like, asexual. Like, he does not give in to anyone. Same with Zoro. Same with... And yet, <laughs> and yet Luffy still likes that thick meat, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he always chases that meat, baby. Yeah, yeah. No, but seriously, though... um. Alvita's hot as fuck. Um, also, <laughs> also, we got to to see the return of Buggy, our Hell boy yeah. Buggy. That scene on the scaffolding with Luffy and Buggy was so funny to me because <laughs> Buggy's like, I'm about to execute you right now. And Luffy's like, oh, cool. Because he's never seen like an execution before. So that's awesome. He's like, he's like, dude, you're the one being executed. He's like, oh, whatever. Stop joking around. It's like, no, you stop joking around. <laughs> Well, the the no. cool thing about that is that's where Gold Roger was supposed to be executed and was yeah. executed. So that was it was a little symbolic at the same time, a little bit symbolic. Yeah, no, it was cool because oh, that's that's the other thing. So we met Smoker, a marine with a devil fruit that generates smoke all over him. I guess we didn't see that much of him. I heard that in the anime you see more of him, but uh, basically he's obviously very tough. He smokes a lot. And he said that when Luffy thought he was going to get actually killed and there was no way out, he like smiled and just accepted his fate. And he's like, the only time I've ever remembered that happening is when Goldie Roger was being executed. Yeah, it's unheard of. Everyone that they've ever executed there is always trembling in fear before like being like getting their head chopped off, which makes sense. Right. Or like at least a straight face. No one (laughs) smiles. Nobody wants to die. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and Zoro got some new swords in Locktown, and then he put them to good use in the Whiskey Peak arc, and we'll talk about that for sure. But yeah, respect for Zoro, definitely. He shined this one, and it was a funny fight. People are getting mad at me in chat for calling Sanji a simp. Sanji's my favorite straw hat, so I could make fun of him if I want to. <laughs> you really don't think Sanji's not a simp? He absolutely is, but he's also he's a gentleman. A and... white knight gentleman simp. That's yeah. what he <laughs> But it makes sense with his character, and I can't get into spoilers, but it absolutely makes sense why he respects Whammon. Yeah. As we all should. As, as we, we all, all should. should. Uh, can we talk about, like, that mysterious dude showing up that apparently can control the weather? Because Ooh. Ooh. L- Luffy was supposed to get executed, but then, like, Boggy gets hit by a lightning... And then you think, oh, like, what an interesting coincidence. But then it turns out that some dude with, like, markings on his face shows up, and Smoker calls him a dragon. 
And he's like, he says he, he wanted Luffy to get away because he didn't want to interrupt another man's journey. And I have no idea who this guy was. Like, there was an air of mystery to him, obviously, but I have no idea. Like, we haven't seen him before, have we? No. No, I think this I'm is mad. This yeah, is so awesome appearance. seeing Adamax first introduction to yeah. this guy and not knowing who he is. Like, I... Okay, because I, like, I, I see you... Every time I'm like, yo, cool new character, you're like, ha, you idiot, he was in chapter two. <laughs> no, no, this character is his first introduction. All we've really heard him say so far is that, like, why would I stop him from starting his journey? And he's like, he, sa- he does say one thing, like, Pirate King... That sounds pretty good. When Luffy says he's the man who wants to become king of the pirates. Oh yeah, yeah. and the other thing with Luffy is he's he's such a he's such a mad lad. As he's about to be executed, he's like, "Hey guys, guess what? I'm gonna be the king of the pirates." And I was like, "What? <laughs> huh? What's happening?" So I will say we do not know what the Dragon Man's devil fruit or power is. We just know he was able to control the wind in that one scene, but we don't know if the lightning that saved Luffy is connected to Dragon. A lot of people uh-huh. theor- theorize about that, but it's not, like, confirmed in any way. Yeah, even no one knows. Even 900-something chapters later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is but 900 chapters, uh, chapters later, we still don't know, but we have slightly more clues. I will say that we constantly get a theme of, like, fate throughout this, um, this arc. And prior to it, when um, Luffy's hometown was looking at the bounty, and you got people like, Oh, look, Luffy got a bounty. That's so that's so great. And then the mayor's like, What's so great about that? He's just another worthless pirate. And he's like, Look, he looks so happy. He's living his dream. Dream yeah. or fate. And then you get one yeah. gets saved by the lightning. You get this thing. It's like, Oh, my God, it's fate on his side. And it's, it's interesting because we'll find out more about Dragon and Luffy and fate in that regard. Yeah, Luffy. Yeah. Uh, Luffy, Luffy is very lucky throughout the entire series. So that that could just be luck. You could chalk it up, or it could be. Or great. is it? Yeah. No, or but maybe, I yeah. do love in terms of Oda's writing. I love how intricate it is, and how many things put in there are foreshadowing for other stuff that's to come. And how you said, you know, there's stuff going on in the background. There's stuff going on with the side stories. That you know, there's so much, and I really do appreciate. It's like. He must map everything out, like years in advance. Have like these complex charts, just pulling a Nami over there just it's, to plan the story out. It's so crazy because we've received yeah. backstories for a lot of our characters already, but we've only received parts. They're not always fully done yet, so more might come later in the yeah. series. And there's so many foreshadowings, even in these chapters. There's there's a couple yeah. that I've talked about on stream that I can't talk about here, but when we get to it, I will point out what a certain character says and leave it at that. But so Oda is just an absolute mad lad. It, the For foreshadowing sure. that's always bugged me is Smoker's assistant, like looks like Zoro's like lost childhood friend. And yeah, I, Queen I still or want to whatever, know more yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah. I still want to know Kuina. more. Like what why? What is that thing? Is, is there are they associated? I don't know. He's, Oda just foreshadows everything, and I don't know what the hell's going on. Someone, yeah. said in, someone said in chat, I think the lightning was definitely fate and not the wind. Well, we do not know if that guy, Dragon's fruit or power, is related to just the wind or all weather in general. And we, have, we don't know if it was connected to the lightning at all as of yet. Yeah. No, there's so much cool stuff going on. I definitely appreciated that. And then we go to the Grand Line, boys. So Luffy and the Straw Hats head to the Grand Line. Buggy and his crew head to the Grand Line. And then Smoker and the Marines pursue them to the Grand Line. So it's just this epic, you know, cluster run for the Grand Line. And it, it's crazy. And then we learned that to get to the Grand Line, you have to, like, go up a mountain. So the ship has to go up a canal into a mountain there's like these calm belts that surround the, the Grand Line that are full of these monsters and there's no wind, so it's very hard to go there. So you have to go through up this mountain. Like it makes no sense in terms of physics. Like no sense. And yet, <laughs> it's so cool because in terms of like a fantasy journey, it's so epic. Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. That, Oda is yeah. so creative. Yeah, that's that's the kind of the beauty of One Piece is that he's able to like shape all of these islands that they go and visit into like different adventures because every island is it's like its own little fantasy world that he created which i really yes. appreciate and that's why i think and it's that perfect is... for a long-running story because every island is a whole new world for them to develop and interact with yeah. different characters right yeah Versus i was gonna the... say that I... go ahead go ahead 
No, I was just going to say that, like, versus a lot of other long-running shonen, they are constantly dealing with similar characters throughout, and it's always the same setting, or very similar settings. Yeah, so I was going to say that, too, as, as a writer. First of all, it's crazy how complex it is, what Oda does, and how he pre-plans everything. Like, his storyboarding must be insane. But second of all, I think that the fact that they're traveling and going on this journey through different islands is what makes One Piece be able to be so long because yeah you can shift so you have one arc on one island with certain powers going on certain characters then you move on to the next one and then it's completely different completely fresh completely new if you had a show that was just set in one specific area dealing with certain villains or whatever at some point it's going to get old yeah but they're constantly moving constantly discovering new things new powers new characters and that is what i think is truly the key to one piece going on for so long well, we also get a, in these, I think right prior to Reverse Mountain, they're talking about Reverse Mountain and how to get to the Grand Line, and you learn that the Grand Line is literally a strip of ocean that goes around the entire ocean, that goes around the, around the entire world, that's surrounded by two calm belts. And then in the four quadrants of the world, you got the North, South, East, and West Sea, and you get the Red Line going around the opposite way of the Grand Line that divides these oceans and these, like, these currents. Um, yeah. And Reverse Mountain's part of the red line, if I remember correctly. I might be wrong. I don't honestly, I don't remember. But basically, what I was trying to say is, <laughs> this is literally a journey around the entire world. So yep. it's built like their ambitions are driving this journey for in, like an entire worldly adventure. Speaking of which, we get to once they get to the Reverse Mountain, they meet that huge whale called Laboon. And then, again, some physics here. Within the whale, there's like a whole freaking world of where this guy lives on an island. It reminds me of Master Roshi, like where he lives. And we learned that this whale has been trying to like get back to West Blue, right, where he's from, because he came there with a bunch of pirates when he was smaller, but now he can no longer fit. And those pirates said that they would sail the world and come back the other way, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. but then never did. And it's been 50 years, and he's desperately trying to get back to his friends. So he's, like, slamming his head into the mountain, trying to break through, and he's got scars all over his head, and it's so sad. It's so sad. Dude, you think it's sad now. Yeah. I keep on doing this. I got to stop, like, with, like, because, like... You think it's sad now. Everything it's comes sad. back into play. Oda's a fucking <laughs> mad lad. <laughs> <laughs> but you get a really wholesome scene where Luffy fights Laboon, and then he yeah, ends up drawing his yeah. like in, like his crest or his um, his emblem and like the skull and crossbones or whatever, so that Laboon will stop crashing his head and gives him something to look forward to. Like now, Luffy pretty much made the same promise: "We'll come back for you eventually." Yeah. yeah. So that dude Crocus, um, he's obviously feels bad for the whale because he keeps like hit, injuring himself. So he like tranquilizes him and all this stuff. And then we have these other peop people, this secret organization that's trying to like eat him and feed him to their village. And, uh, and then what Luffy does is to stop him from hitting himself. He does his epic artwork. He draws the straw hat pirate flag on his like face. And he's like, I promise that I'm your, I'm going to become your rival. And I promise that I will come back and challenge you again. But as a, as proof of that promise, don't keep hitting your head because you're going to dissolve the marking that I made, which is proof of our promise that we made. So yeah, that was pretty cool of Luffy. Even though it's obviously going to dissolve in water, he's a whale. But, you know, the, the, <laughs> Man, the sentiment. The okay, sentiment. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything in regards to, to spoilers too hard. I just want to say, Crocus, relevant character. Laboon, yes. relevant. Yes. One of the two people that were trying to hunt Laboon... Specifically, the female relevant to the Miss story. Miss Wednesday. Miss Wednesday. Yeah, I know her real name, but I won't say it. <laughs> so do we, man. It, Whiskey Peak is part of this. Oh yeah, I I only read the first two arcs. I don't know. I obviously I read Whiskey Peak and watched it a long time ago, but I don't. Did they reveal her name? No, it's revealed. It's revealed. Oh, okay, who she cool. is, yeah. She's Princess mm -hmm. Vivi of Alabasta. Yeah. Aye. Also, everyone is spamming swords in chat, and they're very upset that we forgot to talk about Zoro and his swords in Long Town. Yeah. Yeah, he got so what person. when when he went to buy some swords? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he remember so he got a sword. Yes, yeah, so he walked in with his Wado Ichimonji, which is a very high prestigious sword, and the like owner tries to like 
swindle him and buy it. And he was freaking out. He's like, 100,000, 250,000, 650,000 berries or whatever. And he ends up finding out it's worth 10 million berries or something along those lines. But Zoro obviously wouldn't give it up because it means so much to him. And then he ends up... I'm trying to remember exactly how it went. I'm pretty sure the owner said, hey, if you have 50,000 berries, go grab any sword out of those piles and those buckets or those barrels. And of course, Zoro feels out one of another rare sword, which is a cursed blade. And Animac, do you remember what happens from there? Yeah, so he, um, the owner's like, bro, I don't, I don't want to do this to you. Everyone who uses this blade dies. And he's like, yeah, I want it. And then he shows himself worthy for, of that sword because he's like, if, if I'm going to die from this sword, then I was never worthy of being the greatest swordsman in the first place. So he ends up taking that legendary sword and then he gets another high quality sword. And it's introduced by the the girl who works with Smoker who looks like Zoro's childhood Tash- friend. What was her name? Tashigi. Tashigi. Okay, yeah. yeah. So she tells us that there's... 10 swords that are like considered the greatest and then 20 which are considered really really good and then another 40 which are also considered really good and these, these she wants to get all these swords so they're not being misused by pirates who have no honor and you know dignity and all this type of stuff because she really believes in the art of swordsmanship and the whole culture around it and then Zoro she first doesn't realize that he's a pirate that he's Zoro and then later she realizes he's Zoro and then she, yeah so it was all Interesting stuff. It was a really funny exchange where Tashigi is like, have you ever heard of the man named Zoro? He's like, yeah, I know the name well. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. So he says, I know the name well, but it, so he doesn't reveal that, oh yeah, that's my name. I mean, Tashigi but, is also uh, yeah. pretty like naive. He's like, oh, you wield three swords as well. You're similar to that man named Zoro. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. Imagine that. Wow. Yeah, oh, so man. now he has some epic swords and in Whiskey Peak, he gets to test them out. And we'll yeah. talk about that in a bit. Yep. Um, can we just talk about the fact that Crocus tells the Straw Hats about Raftel, which is a the final island in the Grand Line, which apparently only Goldie Roger and his men were able to reach. And the island is considered to be the stuff of legend. And then Crocus implies that he knows Goldie Roger personally because he seems to be talking to Goldie Roger as if... An old, he's an old friend, and he says this guy Luffy and his friends might actually reach Raftel, kind of to himself. Did you guys remember that? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Of course, some amazing. That, oh, that, so that may be significant. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm thinking it is. I'm thinking <laughs> it is. <laughs> this man's picking it up. I'm proud of you. It's so hard because like I can't say anything, obviously. Yeah, but yeah, Crocus has one line that's fucking hilarious. When he first he first gets introduced, he's like. He's like, someone, like, they're, they're like, well, I'm going to shoot a cannon at you or something. He's like, yeah, if you do, someone's going to die. And so I was like, well, who's going to die, mister? Me. <laughs> yes. And, and then he's like, well, you guys are intruding on my, on my territory. It would be, um, like, appropriate for you to introduce yourselves first. Or, like, common manners to introduce yourselves first. And right before they go to introduce themselves, Crocus is like, Hello, my name is Crocus. I'm 71 years old. Blood type AB. I'm, uh, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very formal. <laughs> it, it reminded me of um, this Japanese samurai movie that I saw. Where this new kind of swordsman, he goes to challenge, like, this great master. And as the master begins the duel, the master drops his sword and, and he's like, I yield, I yield. And the new newbie's like, why would you yield? And he's like, your swordsmanship lacked any sort of skill. It was so careless that I thought any man who could afford to be this careless must be the greatest swordsman in the world. So I yield. Please don't kill me. <laughs> 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 but in reality, you're just a noob. Oh, yeah. that was great. I feel like that happens a couple times in One Piece where like Luffy or other characters will leave themselves completely open. And people are like, what the hell? Like, or even in like a lot of other like martial arts anime, but because they're so strong, they don't even care to like to guard themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But in this case, this guy just didn't know how to do it. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Uh, okay, let's go to Whiskey Peak. So after they leave the whale mountain thing, they go and take Miss Wednesday and whatever the other guy's name is, I don't, I don't, Mr. Nine or, or Mr. Some number. Point is, guy wears a crown. They take them back to Whiskey Peak, where they're apparently from. And by the way, Miss Wednesday could hang with me any day of the week. I just want to say that. Dear God. I love you. <laughs> She's such an amazing and when they get 
when they get there, it's like this town where everyone celebrates pirates, right? So they're like, oh, you guys are pirates. So cool. Awesome. Let's all get you drunk and well fed and all this stuff. Everyone's like, yeah. And Sanji's like, look at all these chicks. <laughs> so they get them drunk and well fed and all this type of stuff. And they all pass out. And then it turns out that this these townsfolk are actually part of a secret organization called Baroque something. Baroque works. Baroque works. Baroque works. And they're actually mm-hmm. mercenaries or uh, bounty hunters who lure pirates, get them like drunk, off their guard, then they just capture them and trade them in for bounties and make money that way. However, our boy Zoro did not let himself be fooled. So when they try to take them all hostage, Zoro's like, hey, I wasn't actually drunk. And then he fights them all. And I thought that was really cool because as a samurai, right? It's not, it's not the same thing as samurai, but it's based on samurai, the swordsman. As a samurai, you should never allow yourself to be so intoxicated or distracted that you are not at all times ready for a potential challenger or potential attack. And Zoro definitely lived up to that because he did drink, but he never allowed himself to be so drunk that he's like, can't defend himself. So then what happens is, and this fight was hilarious, Zoro basically takes on a hundred of these guys from Baroque Works by himself, and they're fighting him. They're like, we'll get you and all this other stuff. And as he's fighting them, he's just like, man, guys, this is embarrassing. (laughs) <laughs> like, not one of you is worthy of my time. This is embarrassing. This is lame. And they're like, no, we'll get you. And he's just like, guys, I- I'm embarrassed to fight you right now. I thought that was hilarious. But he did some cool stuff, cool moves. But he was just like, bring me an actual worthy challenger. This is an embarrassment to all of us. Please. Um, yeah. Also, so one of my favorite parts of that arc, I thought it was so freaking funny when Luffy wakes up. And then Luffy, like, gets mad oh, at Zoro yeah. for beating yes. up beating, beating up and killing up. all of their friends that fed them and drank with them and <laughs> partied with them. And then them fighting, just the collateral damage is enough to take mm-hmm. out some of the main people at Baroque Works. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Luffy fell asleep before he even knew that these guys were trying to capture them. So then after Luffy works hard to save them all, Luffy's like... Zoro, what the hell? They welcomed us. They did all this nice stuff for us, and you attacked them? What is wrong with you? And then he, like, seriously is fighting them, and the members of, of Baroque Works are like, there's no way this Luffy guy is that stupid. There, there's no way. <laughs> like, no, wait, he's serious. He's yeah. actually serious. No, he's actually that dumb. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Noble, so you caught up in about a year, right? Yeah, I did. So how do you feel about these arcs in comparison to the rest? Like, they're definitely smaller and more transitionary, but do you, did you enjoy them? Uh, these arcs were more comedy based and less serious as you later get on in One Piece. And the kind of fun of One Piece in the beginning was the ridiculous amount of humor and this dumb stuff that goes on in it. Like, you don't see the fights anymore where the, it's literally a joke where Zoro is going around not really challenged by all these doofuses and like whatever. <laughs> And then he gets in a fight with his captain, and then somehow while they're fighting, they take out more people who are the actual enemy the entire. You don't see that kind of humor anymore. Yeah, it definitely changes, and I think it's a good. It's like it's good and bad because like I miss it, but at the same time, it's like it's a 950 plus chapter series. You can't just do the same shit all over again. And Oda's good with changing it up, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's good that they're amping up the stakes, honestly, because. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you wouldn't be too invested because it's getting towards the end game now, yeah. even though they're probably still like five years left. Of what yeah. <laughs> Within good no. reason, though, because you see shows like Dragon Ball and Naruto kind of go to shit towards the end where like they started off like pretty like grounded in regards to the powers. And then you need pretty much mountain exploding attacks or world breaking attacks to even be like yeah. a relevant character anymore. Well, they've definitely amped up the stakes in like one piece but it's not so extreme that like these characters can blow up planets yeah, yeah. It's, it's the idea of power creep like at this point goku and super like he like destroys galaxies yeah. by farting so <laughs> yeah it's it's not really interesting at that point and it kind of ruins is. like the basis of the series where you get like martial arts or with it with naruto or jutsus and like training and like were super important and now it's like well you, you kind of need you need a gen 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 Gin Jerky? I don't know what it's called. You need a fucking fox inside of you. You need some crazy eye powers, either the Byakugan or the yeah. or the um, fuck man. I'm terrible remembering these things. <laughs> Uchiha Rock clan. Rock. What does the Uchiha clan have? Oh, oh, Sharingan. Oh, okay. Sharingan. You need Rock something gun. like that to be relevant and e- at all. While like the Rinnegan. You know. There are legit characters in One Piece who may or may not have devil fruits that are still super super powerful. 
And like, you don't need a devil fruit to be powerful. Yeah. Uh, oh shit! I was about to say a name, but I I can't. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> you're good at controlling yourself. I I struggle. Tekken yeah. fucked up huge. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah, but it's okay because um, I mostly don't know the context because so I'm okay because you know Briggs will say a name and I'm like I have no idea who that even is. Yeah. So I'm not I don't know how they're related to the main crew, so it doesn't necessarily matter. But obviously, it's it's best to try to avoid it. However, we do have to talk about a bit. I forgot to talk about this, but the navigation within the Grand Line and how nothing makes sense in terms of. The weather, in terms of the actual pattern of the of the ocean, in terms of um, anything. So Nami, who's supposed to be this navigator, is like, bro, I don't know what's going on. One, you know, one minute it's snowing, one minute it's spring weather. The boat's just turning randomly. There's all this stuff going on. I thought that was pretty crazy because now how are they going to even navigate through the Grand Line when everything that they thought they knew? is wrong and nami is this skilled navigator and all you know everything she's known her whole life looking at the stars looking at the winds all of that is now out the window um yeah. crocus also introduces the log poses which we forgot to yeah mention. the log poses I, I wasn't sure if they were in this i was like can i say that <laughs> yeah, so, so for what i got about these log poses is that they're just some special compass that tells you where the islands are in the Grand Line, because yeah. the islands have like a, a strong magnetic pull. Is that it? Yeah, so there's no yes. sense of direction, like you said, but the islands have a magnetic pull. So whatever island you're closest to, the compass It'll will point, point towards. To. Yeah. Yeah, so so you, what you mean is they can't navigate like north-south. The only thing they can do is go to the next island? Exactly. Yep. Yep. Ah, okay, gotcha. Although... Once you go to the island, it'll demagnetize, and then that island it won't point to anymore. It'll point to the next one. So it's kind of like you might – I don't know what direction, there. if it's north or something, but you can't really tell what's north-south when you're on these seas. All you can really do is follow the path that the log pose brings you on. Yeah, yeah. so that's going to be interesting to see how they now switch it up because Nami's now whole purpose on the ship is brought into question because she doesn't know – how to navigate through these waters. Yes, but at the same time, these waters are even more difficult than, and, like, the East and the East Blue that they came from, right? So now it's like, yeah. at least they have a skilled navigator. She's going to have to learn, of course, but, yes. like, yes. They'd be, they would be screwed without Nami. Yeah, imagine Zoro and Luffy yeah. on their own. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not a good thing, especially since the currents can take them off of the log post's course, like, at any time. Yeah. So... She's not just useless. <laughs> just not just no, useless. I, I, I love Nami. I think she's great. Yeah. And so what ends up happening is that we realize that you know, among Baroque works, there are some people who are in the upper echelon who are stronger than these, you know, random grunts. And one of them is Miss Valentine and the other one is number five or something. And they show up and they're like, we know that there are spies within this organization. It turns out that Miss... Wednesday is actually, as I said, a princess called Vivi from the Kingdom of Alabasta. And I guess this organization, Baroque Works, they have some kind of political ideology and they're trying to overthrow the Alabasta Kingdom government and like ferment uh, rebellion. So she infiltrated them in order to try to stop them from the inside or figure out what they're up to. And now the leadership has figured that out and now they want to eliminate Vivi and get, you know, and everyone who knows about the leadership and some guy called Mr. Crocodile, I guess is the leader of this organization, but that's all we were told. And now because they know that Luffy and the crew are also going to be targeted for elimination. So they can't tell anything about the leader to anyone else. Are you talking about Croco boy? Yes. Yeah, good old Crocodile. Wow. Is that a Yu-Gi-Oh reference in one piece? I never even thought about that. I think what it actually what do you mean? Good old Crocodile. I, I don't think I've met him yet. No, so you, you just mentioned Crocodile, and he's yeah, like you the leader. Him. Yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll get to him. You'll get I'm to his, him. Don't worry. I, there's a certain character that calls him Croco Boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, so I thought that was cool, because now we're introducing some politics. I always like secret societies. I think they're very interesting. So we have this secret society. Uh, they're trying to ferment rebellion, create some utopia, whatever that means. But they also like money. Yeah. And then we had Nami coming in, too, because... They were asked by that guy with the wig or whatever, can you please escort Princess Vivi back to Alabasta and protect her? And Ami's like, sure, for one billion berries. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, what do you mean? I can't authorize that. It's like, she's a princess. You bet 
your ass, you're going to authorize it. So, so, yeah, that was very in character with Nami. She's like, yeah, we'll help you for a steep price, bro. Another yeah. thing that's in character with Nami, what's it called? When they were getting the newspaper from the seagull at the beginning, they're like, you guys keep on increasing your prices. Like, you even try to heckle with uh, or barter with a seagull for the Yeah, newspaper. I know. <laughs> yeah, but he, seagull's like, what? <laughs> um, <laughs> is there anything that we're forgetting? So now Vivi's traveling with the Straw Hats at the point that you're at, right, Animac? Yes, but then also some other chick with a cowboy hat showed up too at the end. Oh, so we should also mention that Miss Valentine has a devil flu fruit called Kilo Kilo Devil Fruit, which allows her to change her weight from one kilo to like a 10,000 kilos at will. Yep. They didn't really explore it too much, but she revealed that to us. She was kind of like, hey, guys, just so you know, I have this devil fruit. And then uh, this new person, this new chick, who, again, Sanji was right away, is like, yes. <laughs> um, she shows up riding a turtle or something. And she also has a devil fruit, although I did not pick up on her power. She just kind of like throws Luffy and Zoro, I think, away from her. But I did not pick up what her power was. And she shows up saying that she is like the vice president of the secret society. <coughs> of, of Baroque works. I believe that happened. Yeah, I, I honestly, I'm not sure. Like I've obviously watched it and read it, but I didn't get to reread it prior to the stream. So I can't remember exactly, but apparently people are saying that Crocodile has been confirmed to be a warlord already within these chapters. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. So, so Crocodile was confirmed to be one of the seven warlords. And uh, Do you remember who Mihawk, the other warlord Mihawk was? Is one. Mihawk is one, and then Jimbei, whoever that is. Yep. Did they mention Jimbei already? Yeah, yeah he was mentioned yeah. when, when uh, the warlord idea was introduced. They said that Jimbei oh, is one right. of them, and right. Mihawk is one of them. They were on their way to Arlong, so then they brought up Jimbei. Okay. Yep. Yeah, 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 that's cool. Are we? I feel like you're missing all, Miss All Sunday. Miss All Sunday, okay. Yeah, that's her. That's the one that I'm saying. The girl, the girl with the cowboy hat, right? And oh, then yeah, she yeah, takes yeah, yeah. Luffy's straw hat. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah she's the one that shows up at the end, and yep. she's like, uh, "What does she say she's there for?" Uh, she she tries to give them a log pose or a, a special one called the Eternal Pose which points them to an island that's close to where they need to go. But then, of course, Luffy says, he just destroys and says, you're not deciding where I go, bitch. <laughs> yeah, I remember she's that. Like, that's amazing. Yeah, she's like, I'll show you a, a shortcut and I'll let you follow me. And he's like, I'm not going that way. I'm going the dangerous way. Yeah. That's right. So, I'm, so I guess, I think it was supposed to be a trap as well, the Eternal Pose, potentially. I can't remember exactly. I, uh, I don't but, know. But the Eternal Pose was probably going to bring them straight to Alabasta. And in this case, he would have to follow his own Log Pose, which has some smaller islands along the way. And I do enjoy... The next um, episode of the, uh, the One Piece version is going to cover Little Garden. And I do enjoy some of the smaller islands along the way, but Adamac, you're going to fucking love Alabasta. Alabasta is a fantastic arc. Yeah, it really is. One of my favorites. I think what is it with these hard cowboy chicks, though? <laughs> I mean, Adamac, uh, not Adamac, Oda pretty makes any, especially post time skip, any character he introduces is like 10 out of 10. <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah, so the thing with the Miss All Sunday, she's a, apparently the partner of Mr. Zero, who I assume is Crocodile, right? So she's like, works side by side by the leader of the Baroque works, Crocodile. Correct. Yeah. Have we, okay. we haven't, man, I'm so scared to say anything because I'm not like 100% refreshed on this chapter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, I don't know if something is... happens a little bit later because like, are you I'm talking just, about a certain character that I love to death? I don't know if she's been introduced yet. Who's also, let me Google these characters. <laughs> so at the very end, Little Garden is kind of introduced. There's like a bunch of wild beasts are shown and yeah. giant footsteps. Exactly. Well, Wait, did yeah, they did they show all Sunday? Yes. Yeah, yeah they, they showed the character. Yeah. Oh my god, that's hype. For anyone who knows <laughs> who All Sunday is, I can't say. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's oh. very cool seeing all the characters slowly. Man, you're slowly you're meeting all these relevant characters. That's awesome. Yeah. Also, I want to say I love reading the manga and I do think the manga is better than the anime, but there were some filler in Logtown. And it didn't include Logtown was so short in the manga, but in the anime, yes, it was. it's a lot longer. 
And it's because they skipped filler. Like, there was a scene where Zoro works for, works for Toshigi because he doesn't want to give up his identity. He works as a marine, like, janitor for, like, an episode. And he ends up trying to, <laughs> he ends up trying to escape once he realizes stuff is going on. And he attacks, he uses three brooms, three broom style, and takes out some marines, which is hilarious. Mm. And then there's, there's also a scene where Luffy, I think, gets lost on his way to look for the execution tower or platform. And he stumbles into a bar called Gold Roger. And there's this old man there who kind of reminisces about, about old Gold Roger, a real pirate, and like this whole execution that happened that he witnessed when he was younger. And he's like, nowadays there are no good real pirates. And he's like, what are you having to drink? And Luffy's like, I don't drink alcohol. Can I have some milk or something? <laughs> mm. But anyway, like Luffy's just like listening to all his stories. And then as, he, the guy, as Luffy walks out, he sees Luffy's bounty poster on the wall for $30 million. And he's like, maybe there are some real pirates left or something along those lines. Yeah, I love those yeah. little things that they add. Just just building up Luffy's character to become the Pirate King and go on his journey. And I did like the fact that, uh, it, again, this chapter reinforced by just by Luffy crushing that internal pose. It's like, I don't want to get to where I'm going right away. I don't care about that. I care about the journey, which is why One Piece is as long as it goddamn yeah. is. <laughs> Which is great. I well, love I mean, he's, the fact. He's had ample opportunities to speed up his journey, and he continuously prolongs it because he doesn't want to take a shortcut to like find the One Piece or make his journey shorter. And he even says that once he reaches, um, in this case, it was called it's called Raftal, which is a mistranslation. <laughs> but I'm gonna, continue, <laughs> I'm gonna continue with that so that Adamac doesn't get spoiled. I think it's better this way once we find out the real name of the island. Um, but. It's not a spoiler if you were to know the name, but I'd prefer you not to. Yeah. But basically, it's like even once he finds the One Piece, he says there's so many different routes on the Grand Line, and he wants to experience them again and again. So he says, he's like, yeah, this is just our first trip around the world. So technically, he wants to do multiple trips around the world. Yeah, I, I was just looking. I was just looking with the Miss All Sunday thing, and I think Luffy's pissed at her because she took his straw hat and put it on her own head. At one point, and he's I like, mean, screw yeah. you, I'm not following you. Yeah, that, that could be the reason, yeah. I mean, don't mess with the straw hat. <laughs> yeah, no, he loves that hat. But, <laughs> yeah, I think the, the interesting thing about filler is usually they're crap, and they just drag the story down. But, yeah, like you said, Briggs, sometimes it can be good if it's developing a really cool part of the story and contributing to the character development and stuff like that. Yeah, it's hard to make filler good because you can't really add to the story. But you can still make funny, cool scene, scenes that, like, not develop the characters, per se, but make sense <laughs> in line with the development they're going to receive. Like the High School of the Dead OVA. Of course, <laughs> yes. That one's very important. Of course it yeah, is. Yeah, I know, I know Noble is a man of culture. I know that you would <laughs> appreciate that. <laughs> Cover story, yeah. Usopp versus Daddy. Oh, yeah, so I guess that wasn't filler. I thought that was probably filler. Did you read that cover story, Usopp? Uh, Usopp. Oh my god, Adamac. <laughs> <laughs> I, the cover stories were this um, time around, were all about Helmeppo and Captain Morgan. Yeah, so there's, I, I thought it was filler, but I guess there's a scene where there's this legendary, like, sniper says Pistolman on, um, on Logtown that Usopp kind of faces up against. I don't recall seeing that. That was filler. That was filler. That was filler? Yeah. It was. It was skipped in. Um, it was skipped in the anime, or at least in one pace. True. Yeah. So the takeaway for this, I, for this episode, is I definitely liked these arcs a lot. You're right. Uh, Lockdown was very brief. Uh, Reverse Mountain arc was also very brief, and Whiskey, Whiskey Peak was interesting. But I feel like a lot of stuff happened. A lot of cool stuff happened. We learned a lot of things. Oh, so many waifus. Like, this was the week of waifus, okay? We had cowboy waifu number one, which is Alvida, and I don't care. She's still super hot. <laughs> um, we had Miss Wednesday, aka Vivi. We had Miss Valentine, for those who like girls with short hair. And we have cowboy waifu number two. And Sanji loves them all. Like, I, I hope Sanji hooks up with someone, man. I feel bad for this dude. He's like, beautiful woman, yes! And then they're all like, no one cares. Sanji. Sorry, like, he, no. he gets him. He gets himself. Um, he Something. achieves his dream in a way later. <laughs> later in the series. He All gets right, cool. himself a harem of something. 
I hope he gets isekai and has his own harem because he deserves yeah. it. Man. And yeah. for all the One Piece whores out there, um, I just want to say that there's a scene with Sanji when they're talking about Reverse Mountain and how Zoro makes a comment that it just doesn't make sense to go up a mountain. And he's like, and Zoro, Sanji says something that foreshadows, it's a huge foreshadowing by Oda, but it's so subtle and I can't get into it. But Animac, once you get to this part in the story, I'm legit going to bring this back up and it's going to be great. Okay, I look forward to that. Yeah, like definitely this was interesting because it was three smaller arcs at once. But I feel like a lot happened. They got to the Grand Line finally, which is a huge deal. Luffy had his whole fate moment at the scaffolding, you know, looking at, back at Goldie Roger. And we had this whole reveal about Vivi, the princess, Alabasta. That's the new mission. So yeah, I feel like this is going to be very, very cool and interesting. And I wonder if Vivi is actually going to become like a permanent Straw Hat member or if they're actually just going to protect her until they get to the kingdom. I'm curious to find out. Yeah. Because well, it is seems like important. A, she is a lot of important. cool people have been just getting brought to the crew, right? So, you know, we yeah. had Sanji, Usopp, Zora, Nami, everyone's, all the cool characters are getting brought into the crew. So we'll see what happens. And There's I will definitely say... some potential Straw Hats that have been introduced oh. so far. Uh, and I will say one of the best things about that is Vivi is one of the first nobles of the series. And yes, <laughs> that's oh, all I want to say. Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just got that because at first I was like, what is he? But okay. <laughs> also, do they, mention, on words. do they mention Smoker's Devil Fruit and like what type it is? No. So they just, I from what I've seen is that it's just, it's called Plume Plume Devil Fruit. And it visible. generates smoke. Yes, it generates smoke. And it's the first yes. of its type that you've been introduced to. But I guess I'll leave it like that. Okay. And yeah, what we're talking about is the Viz translation, because I'm reading the official uh, hardcover, or not hardcover, but the actual, like, volumes. That is why we're dealing with the Viz translation. Someone mm -hmm. in chat that said, wait, is that Nux? Yes, that's yes. Nux. Yes, it's, it, By the way, I did not... It's me! <laughs> I, I did not realize that Vivi had blue hair until I saw, like, the cover. Yeah, they've Art. legit gotten that wrong because there's been certain characters where the, he hasn't drawn in color. So they'll, they'll add to the anime with a certain hair color or skin tone and then it's like a rev it's revealed like 100 chapters later that everything they had in the anime was wrong. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, I guess that happens when you have such a long-running show. Yep. True, true. All right, thank you so much for joining me, Noble and Briggs. I really look forward to continuing this podcast. It, I'm, I'm loving One Piece. I, I think I can say it. I think I can say that I'm loving One Piece right Hell now. Hell yeah. Hell yes. I love that you're loving One Piece, my man. And I love the idea of the journey and all the creative things like, you know, have to sail up a mountain to enter the Grand Line. Like I said, it makes no sense physically, but who cares? Because it's a fantasy adventure and it's epic. And yeah, I'm, I'm liking the characters. Still love Nami probably the most. But respect for Zoro, Luffy, and everyone else as well. Oh, we get the first introduction to um, Miss uh, uh, Luffy's little gag that he has ongoing throughout the series. Uh, Nami explains the phenomenon that is Reverse Mountain, and Luffy is like, "Oh, that makes sense. So it's a mystery." <laughs> like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, and and the whole Baroque um, works—they're all like the whole point of our organization is that it's mysterious. Okay, it's <laughs> mystery. <laughs> Uh, all right, so everyone, next week we are reading Little Garden, which is chapters 115 through 129 of the manga, and it covers episodes 70 through 77 of the anime. And apparently it has wild beasts and giants, so yeah. looking forward to seeing that. Hell yeah, there's a very epic moment on this. Um, it's not my favorite arc by any means, but it has, a, it has some epic moments. Thank you guys for everyone in the chat who joined us, donated, subscribed, all that stuff. Really greatly appreciated and we'll be back again next week and of course the rank of fan anime podcast is on thursdays so don't forget to check that out as well same twitch channel rank of TV, same youtube channel rank of anime podcast but we're uh the one piece virgin and the rank of a anime podcast are on are different on like spotify itunes and stuff like that so nobles links will be stuff. uh linked down below for the youtube video and all that absolutely yep be sure to show you gotta check out lost pause the man is a meme legend i always for some reason he uploads like really late at night and like i'm when i'm checking my phone before bed i'm like i see his spicy memes and anime waifus in the thumbnails and i'm like yeah 
it's a strategy, man. Most people try yeah. to upload early, but uh, Noble is like he's Some appealing to those weebs in bed. Some people need videos late at night, you know. Yeah, it, yeah, because uh, Noble knows like a lot of people fab uh, before bed, and he's got to, you know, he's got to. <laughs> That's help right, him. damn right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so thank you guys so much, and until next time, see ya, space reverse cowboys. Bang reverse. Oh, okay. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I'm, re I'm, refer I'm referring to my. Uh, to my girls, Alvida and the other yeah. girl.